Here in the West, we don't think much about how we get our games. Usually we think of a game we want, we can either download it instantly, order a copy online, or go to a store and pick it up before sitting down to enjoy our new purchase. But what about the other side of the globe? More specifically, China. I was drawn to this topic recently from an article on gamesindustry.biz talking about Animal Crossing's ban in China in regards to players using the game's customization options to criticize the government. And in true People's Republic of China fashion, suddenly all mentions of the game disappeared overnight, despite Animal Crossing being largely popular in China. But what's it like to buy a game in China? How many and what types of games do Chinese gamers like to play? And what problems do gamers there face? As always, I've done the research so you don't have to. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to more content from us. I think before we start talking about how video games are purchased in China, it's important to give context on how Chinese people shop. In the West, online shopping has become a dominating force in the economy, with Amazon in particular leading the charge. But in China, a country of nearly 1.4 billion people, or nearly 18.5% of the entire world's population, more than half of them shop online. And practically everyone uses an app called Taobao. Now, Taobao is a bit complicated to explain, but basically it is the service for customer-to-customer -customer business. Similar to how we think of eBay here, the service is a go-between between two individuals who want to exchange goods. But it tends to be that one of the consumers is actually a shop that exists by selling things on Taobao. They do also have a sister app called Tmall, which can sell from businesses and brands, but the average Chinese consumer is usually wary of these big brands, unless they know someone who vouches for them, either a friend or, yes, influencers. Even in China, influencers are a thing. Heck, you can even watch live streams of influencers trying products in the Taobao app. But the truly amazing thing about Taobao is that you can search for a good you like, order it, and depending on the seller's proximity to you, you can receive it the very same day or even shorter if you're ordering something like produce or a meal. Taobao sells everything, and because they're so huge, they can offer incredibly cheap and fast delivery. Now, obviously people in China can use Taobao to purchase game consoles and games themselves, but let's take a quick second to look where these products are coming from. Nowadays, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and as of December 2019, the Nintendo Switch are being officially sold in China but most of the versions of these consoles are region locked. If you're not familiar with region locking, basically it prevents certain media from running on certain hardware, depending on where that hardware is meant to be sold. For example, European or PAL versions of N64 cartridges wouldn't work on N64s designed to be sold in North America or Japan. In this case, however, if you bought an officially licensed Nintendo Switch for China, at launch, the only officially licensed game for the console was Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Yeah, they could only buy an old Wii U port. And this didn't change until literally March of this year, when they got access to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Mario Odyssey. And that's it. However, this isn't to say that Chinese Switch players were left out in the cold. Conveniently, the Switches that were officially licensed to be sold in China were sold without region locking enabled. However, they were distributed in partnership with the Chinese tech giant Tencent with the somewhat well-known understanding that at any point Tencent could flip a switch and introduce a patch that would region lock the console. Now, this isn't to say that people in China aren't getting around this. Heck, even before the switch was officially licensed to be sold in China, people were importing the console from Japan, Hong Kong, and even the US to play any variety of games they could get their hands on. Then, through the use of Taobao, you could order it from a store who had imported it and bam! Now you have your own non-region locked Nintendo Switch, which has full access to the eShop and any other game you'd like to buy a physical copy of. And gamers in China are doing exactly this. The problem is that these sales aren't getting properly recorded, so we have no idea how many people in China are buying consoles or video games. Heck, when Nintendo announced that they were partnering with Tencent to sell Switches in China, Nintendo CEO Shuntaro Furukawa told investors, Quote, we have not factored the sales in China into our financial forecast for the current fiscal year. And even if this launch does occur during the current fiscal year, we do not expect a significant impact on the year's business results. Basically saying, we don't think the Switch is going to sell gangbusters in China. And this is because they don't entirely expect Chinese consumers to start buying the officially licensed version. They're most likely to continue buying imported versions which count towards sales in other countries. For example, if a Chinese shopper buys a Switch off Taobao that was imported from Hong Kong, then on paper that Switch was sold in Hong Kong. 
and this is the case for Xbox and Sony's hardware as well. Similar to the rest of the world, the PlayStation 4 is the most popular console in China, which has officially sold 1.5 million units. But the real number is probably somewhere much higher. Unlike in the US, importing doesn't mean slow and frustrating. Most of the online stores on Taobao have a stock of the items the same day they go on sale in other countries, and they can send it out to anyone who buys it on the same day. Basically, China is the wild west of gaming, and there are so many things we don't know about people's normal gaming habits. This leads me to tackling a common myth about Chinese gamers. That most Chinese gamers play on PC. This is not the case anymore. Yes, PC reigned supreme in China, especially since consoles were banned until 2015. But in actuality, while internet cafes with people lined up playing StarCraft, MMOs, and Counter-Strike clones continue to exist, they have largely been on the decline. Similar to the West, a huge chunk of gaming profits in China are made off mobile games. Smartphones have become ubiquitous in China. And based on a study published in 2018, 459 million people in China play games on their phone. That's the entire population of the United States and Japan combined. In fact, in just the first half of 2018 alone, the Chinese gaming industry raised over $15 billion. And 60% of that came from mobile games, with 30% coming from PC and console gaming combined. Another common myth about Chinese gamers is that they are pirating tons of games all the time. And while this was a bit of an issue before, it isn't really much of one now. Since gaming has suddenly become available to a huge portion of the population in China, you're left with a lot of people who are struggling just to learn how to play the games. They're not exactly tech savvy enough to learn how to pirate content. On top of this, due to the quickly growing size of the middle class in China, most people playing have enough disposable income to drop on a game and don't want to go through the hassle of pirating them. After all, many studies have been done across various forms of media, showing that if you make a product available and not crazy expensive, people will still pay for it instead of pirating. Of course, this isn't to say that pirating and, yes, hacking doesn't happen in China. They still have four times the population of the entire United States, so of course there's going to be some bad apples. One final misconception about China is that they don't develop their own games, and this is not true. The main reason we believe this is because practically none of these games leave China. They're made for the Chinese, by the Chinese. And most of them are mobile games, because, like I said, There's gold in them hills! But game developers in China also remake versions of games that are banned there. And yeah, this is a gross breach of copyright laws, but I'm also somewhat sympathetic to this, since so many developers in the West get their start learning game development by creating simpler clones of other popular games. And in China, these games aren't available anyways, so more power to the people who want to recreate them and share them across a huge population that would otherwise not get the chance to play them, even if there is some jank. And of course, we can't do a video talking about game development in China without talking about Tencent. I mentioned them briefly before, but if you don't know, Tencent is probably the biggest games company in the world. I mentioned them briefly in my video on Ubisoft, but they currently own 100% of Riot Games, the creators of League of Legends, one of the biggest games in the world, as well as the new hotness on Twitch, Valorant. They own nearly 85% of Supercell, the juggernaut company for mobile games who develop Clash of Clans. They own a 40% share in Epic Games, a figure that has caused them an awful lot of controversy. Not like they need the help. They own 11.5% of Bluehole, the developer slash publisher of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and a 5% share in Ubisoft as well as Activision Blizzard. In addition to all of this, they are pretty much the company that people partner with in order to sell their games in China. Which, if you haven't got the picture by now, is the biggest gaming market in the world. You see, in order for a foreign company to do business in China, you have to partner with a Chinese company, which allows some of the profits to go back into China's economy. And Tencent has made a killing, being the de facto liaison for gaming companies in China. But apart from all of this, gamers in China are pretty similar to gamers elsewhere. They prefer games that have a background familiar to them. Just as many gamers in the States love setting scene in The Division or Fallout because they showcase locales we know, Chinese consumers are big into games focusing on Chinese fantasy. And the most popular genre in China is RPGs. So really, their typical gamer is not so different from us in the West even if they have to jump through some extra hoops to play games the same way we do. And there you have it, my research on what a typical Chinese gamer is like, what it's like to buy games there, and just how influential the Chinese market is on the gaming industry. It's a discussion that hasn't really happened yet, but similar to how many Hollywood films are made with the Chinese moviegoer in mind, 
I think it won't be long before we start talking about games being made for the Chinese consumer in mind as well. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed hearing me talk about this side of the industry, consider joining our Discord, where we talk about stuff like this and much more, as well as our live show we do on Twitch every week covering the current gaming news. And if you have a few bucks to toss our way, we'd love it if you could help us out on Patreon. But either way, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful day.